A week ago, we asked you guys to send us your Minecraft words. The response was so positive, we received over 250 words. That meant we had to go through all of them manually. It took a lot of time, but eventually we picked out our favorites to show in this video. And some of them are truly insane. Starting off with the word by Fergrim, where we have this beautiful desert themed village. All the houses here are well decorated and I can definitely tell he has spent a lot of time building them. My favorite build in this city has to be the arena right here. It fits so nicely with the team and looks beautiful to my eyes. The city is also where Fergrim's main base and home is. And I have to agree, it's definitely a nice place to live at. Next to the city in the jungle is also this awesome Mayan style pyramid. And what I like about it that it's not overly detailed. It's precise enough to be interesting, but also staying clean at the same time. A beautiful build in my opinion. Peregrim also has a decorated perimeter that has an end portal in the middle. I personally know how long it can take to decorate the perimeter, so I really appreciate what he has done here. Moving to the end, we have some decorations in here as well. Overall, I should say it's a really nice world, and I see a lot of potential in it. Thank you Fer for allowing us to show this. Moving on we have a world called Mega Build Survival from the Maximus JK. He has many impressive builds in his world but we are gonna start off with a massive Victorian castle. It's highly detailed and looks amazing as you can see. It's also practical having a village trading center on the inside. Maximus is also working on the interior at the moment as a 30 day challenge. And as a fun fact, this entire castle was built without an elytra, which only makes it more impressive. Next we have his Tudor style starter base that looks like this. I wish I could build a starter base that looks like this one. Anyway, the village has many different detailed buildings and also these cool custom acacia trees made with slabs. And my favorite part, a working lighthouse right over here. Overall, it's so unique looking and I really like it. But we are only getting started. That is how Maximus's garden farm looks like. I mean, just have a look. It fits perfectly with the ocean and looks absolutely insane. It's the biggest build in his world. It's inspired by an ancient aquatic temple overrun by nature. And it's the second time that Max has built it. I guess he really likes spending insane amounts of time on his garden farms. He also has two builds in the world that he has not finished yet. One of them being this huge gothic cathedral as his main base, which looks absolutely massive. And the other one is in the end, which resembles a cyberpunk city being swallowed by the black hole. But only the black hole is finished as of now. So thank you Max for sending us this world and I wish you the best of luck with the builds in the future. But now a word from a subscriber called Skulk Knight MC, and he wanted to share his copper city with different interesting builds. For example, he has this cool fake mushroom island with the big mushroom in the center. He even went through the trouble of bringing some mushroom cows here to make it look as realistic as possible. Another thing I like is the museum right here. It looks pretty and also has some interesting stuff on the inside. For example the fossils that you can usually find underground. Then this panda temple here is also a cool idea. It's a custom ocean monument that has been converted into a living space for the pandas. A super unique build in my opinion. And last but not least, the cherry blossom trees. Those look nice. Thank you Skulk for showing us your city. But this next world is truly one of a kind. You know we had to go through hundreds of words. So what made the word exploration really easy was to use Wise Hosting, our own hosting company where we can upload the word file and we could explore a new word together with Robin. If you're looking for a server where to host your word or start a new one, check out wisehosting.com. Choose the closest server location and when checking out, use the discount code SHALKER to save 20% from the first month. Thanks again to our own company Wise Hosting for hosting the words. I'm really excited to show you the world of the Funku Chen. Let's start off with the ground floor. Look how beautiful that is. It is symmetrical, has all kinds of different biomes included here and overall it is just so satisfying to look at. But as you probably noticed, there is a tower in the middle here. 
And what if I told you that this tower is actually a thousand blocks tall? And yes, that is true. 320 blocks was not enough for the Fangu Chen. So he used the data pack to extend the build limit and build a thousand blocks high tower. Which is not only tall, but also absolutely insane. It has tens, if not hundreds of different ideas, styles and references all built into it. It is a real piece of art. And not only from the outside, the inside is also fully decorated as well, having rooms with different themes, farms and so on, on each and every floor. And as I told you, that goes on until we reach the Y level 1000. But that's not all. At the bottom of the tower, there is a super cool looking room, where a warden is stuck in the middle. And trust me, there is a lot more to look for in this world. For example, this cool dragon here, or the mini version of the thousand block tower. So cute. Luckily Funk has his world download linked under his videos. So if you wanna check it out, go explore the world yourself. Thank you Funkuchen for sending us your world. Here we have a village built by Snark and his friends over the span of two and a half years. It features many interesting and beautiful builds. So let's take a closer look at some of them. First of all, this Japanese styled small city right over here. Looks beautiful and also has a couple of pandas chilling in the middle. Or this cube that has different biomes on each of its six sides. It looks really cursed if you ask me. Also these two buildings here look really familiar. I think we have made something like this ourselves as well. And personally my favorite build of them all, the Burj Khalifa. It looks really similar to the real deal including the palm trees and beaches to make it all fit together so well. There are many more interesting and different builds around here, but sadly I don't have enough time to show you all of these. But the last two things I want to show you are this museum, and it's the mob and item museums. First we have the mob museum, it looks like this and has every single mob in the game collected. And then the item museum, as you probably already guessed, it has every single item in the game collected. And yes, there is a lot of items. It has hundreds of item frames, so it's a bit laggy. But that doesn't stop it from being an awesome world. It's cool to see so many different ideas all in one place. So thank you Snark for showing us your world. But this next world is sent to us by Louis. So let's see what awesome stuff has Louis built. Starting off with this huge mega base. This whole area is surrounded by a modern wall, terraformed and custom designed from the inside. It covers thousands of blocks and includes a storage area, sorting system, villager hall and everything else essential. To top it off, it is all spawn proofed, using the glow legend, so it is 100% safe. The most impressive part about this is definitely the terraforming and greenery. I can imagine it took a lot of time. But as you probably noticed, there are no farms here. Well, that is what the industrial district is for. But that's not your regular industrial district. All the farms have been fitted into this awesome looking factory. If we take a look from behind, we can also see some of the farms. An awesome feature of this factory is the belt, which allows you to see all the items go by that the farms produce. Louis also has an end mega base build going on, but this one is not finished yet. Overall, I really like the vault of base area, and I think that it's a unique way of building a base. Thanks Louis for sending us your world. Welcome to the David's world, which was created in 2011, and this was his first city. Not gonna lie, it doesn't look that good, but as time went on, he started building a brand new one. And this is the new big city that you are seeing right now, but this is not a city full of empty buildings. All the buildings are fully decorated with different rooms. I mean, some skyscrapers have like 50 floors, and even then it is all decorated with awesome looking interiors. But that is still not my favorite part. Have a look at the inside of some of these houses. It has different crop farms, a old mob farm hidden away by the tinted glass, melon and pumpkin farm and so on. These were just a couple I showcased, but there is a lot. He lives in this fancy looking mansion that has a storage room for all the other stuff on the inside. When following this underground tunnel, we get to escape the city and arrive to a new place called the New Davidopia. Another city which has a garden farm in the middle. It's really a work of art, because the garden farm is visible from all the rooms he has built around it. 
and the rooms look amazing as usual, because that is David's world after all. Thank you David for allowing us to have a look around this amazing base. Now we enter the world of Soxhoa, which has some really useful farms right at the spawn. But that's not the cool part in this world. The first build we will see is this blue and white zeppelin. And on the inside we discover a furnace melter with a 196 furnaces, all using carpet tubing. I have a really high render distance, so we can actually see the next build. It is this Japanese style floating island with pink trees. But wait, those are not even the new cherry trees. I'm in creative so I can help him out. And that looks much better. But again, there is a catch here, on the inside of the well. There is a tree farm hiding away here. Prepare to be surprised about the next build. Introducing the Furby. Bruh. Who comes up with a decoration idea like this? But I guess that is the word of Soxoa. The farm hiding inside this plushy toy is a big link bartering farm. Producing 400,000 items per hour. But there is exactly one more build. Or should I say a gigantic masterpiece. It is the Giga Chad, built out of 60,000 blocks. What a great meme to build. But what could be inside it? Well, it is the portal based gold farm, inspired by our design. This last build really sealed the deal for this world. What an awesome submission and thanks to the world of Soxo for letting us show this thing. Our next world is by Jack the Ripper. If you know, you know. It is the crazy Space for Kriya 3.0. He started this six and a half years ago and he has built it twice on the 2B2T server because there was a time it was griefed and completely destroyed. But wow, hands down it is the biggest project I have ever seen anyone done and it's hard to say anything about it because it leaves me speechless. The only way I can get good FPS around it is by looking at the sky. But that's boring. And seeing this in 20 FPS is still better than not seeing it. Thanks Jack the Ripper for sending this and I think we are all mind blown by the look of this base. Then we have a word sent by Ryan that included a beautiful story. You wake up in the house filled with plants. The sun is shining and the sky is blue. You grab some food from the outside restaurant and head to see where the noise is coming from. Oh, it's the villagers that are trading around as usual. You head up to the top of the lighthouse to gaze at the beautiful view of this village. Suddenly it gets so hot that you take a swim in the lake, which leads you to finding the most beautiful cave that you have ever seen. And then it is time to relax, in the gazebo, which is the exact copy of the gazebo Ryan's grandma has. What a beautiful sunset this is. But honestly, this village is beautiful and I hope Ryan continues working on it to make it even bigger. The work by Ali and Khaled is what we are reviewing next. After logging on, everything seemed normal. Until I turned around and couldn't believe how massive their base is. They started working on this world in Minecraft 1.19 and the base took them 2 months to build. On the inside it has a storage system with an automatic sorting system. There are some smelters but also a lot of work in progress stuff. Including the landscaping around the base. The rest of the area is an industrial district full of different farms. That was Ali and Khaled's world but we gotta move on to the next one. This now is the world by degrees and we are in the end because here is the main area of the world. The end island is completely removed and replaced with this huge but beautiful mountain. The house and the dragon are purely for decoration purposes. But you might see something else peeking under the mountain. That is the massive storage system that includes a fully automatic sorting system. It was all done by him and his friend during the school break. The stone also has some living space on the inside, but also some farms hidden away. Far away we can see this Enderman XP farm, then this raid farm, which I have honestly never seen anyone build in the end. And then the beast of it all is the mega iron farm, honestly great job transforming the end. But when I went back to the overworld, this is the only thing I see. Excuse me? Like there is no way that is actually your base. I mean I couldn't find anything else close by, so thanks to Tigris for submitting your amazing end island. 
to avoid making this video an hour long, I will quickly give out some honorable mentions to the worlds that didn't get the full segment in this video. Rusted Cognition with this massive spiky looking building and on the inside we find a villager trading hall. Mootway with this cool looking skull made entirely out of bone blocks. Mr. Toxic Studios had an Ender Dragon pet in his overworld, that's crazy. Runner Man's world is for the Star Wars fans and look how huge the ship is. Sunny made an end island transformation, even putting all the water here to make the ocean. That is some hard work and dedication. Deckard has a really unique perimeter because of these colorful walls. I like the look of it very much. Eevee Treecraft is working on a massive castle, but as I said, it's unfortunately still a work in progress. Eric and Mark have this huge town of different buildings, but out of all of these, I like the IKEA building, because on the inside it is actually a storage room. And finally a world by Donny, which is a cave only world. The main build here is the rare mob collection, which he is actively expanding. But if you'd like to see us review more worlds from you guys, then let us know in the comments below. I really liked seeing what people actually build and do in their worlds. But until next time, see ya!